having fun in Germany of course but not Germany as you might know it I'm about 80 miles from the city of Hamburg in a northwesterly direction and if you've got your map you'll think steady on that's in the middle of the North Sea and you would be quite right I'm on Heligoland or Helgoland as they call it now in Germany but for many years it was actually a British possession. We swapped it for Zanzibar. Before that it was Danish. Cast adrift in the North Sea, fragments of Germany that have been invaded and traded, attacked and blown up, so much that it's a miracle Heligoland has survived to become one of Europe's most fascinating island adventures. Getting there is all part of the experience. The main island is known in German as Hauptinsel, or just Helgoland, and its smaller sibling, Duna, is just to the east. Both are about 30 miles from the coast of mainland Germany. And Duna is handily flat, which is just as well if you're approaching by air. You can fly in on a small plane from Cuxhaven Airport, which is basically a strip of concrete with a hut attached. There's one pilot, which is all you need for a 15 minute hop. This isn't your average flight to a holiday island. The service is strictly no frills and huge fun because you get really good views of the jigsaw of mudflats on the Vaden Sea that decorates the northwest coast of Germany before the North Sea proper comes into view. Just as well there's plenty of in-flight entertainment because the journey on the Britain Norman Islander cost around £100 making it one of Europe's most expensive air hops per mile and that's only one way. All too soon you come in to land to a place that certainly appears to be weird. Let's see if it's wonderful. First, the quick hop across on the little ferry from Duna to Heligoland proper. Oh, and if you don't fancy the flight, then the fast ferry from Hamburg is less expensive and for some reason appears to have escaped from the island of Cyprus. And the slow ferry from Cuxhaven is cheaper still, popular with ornithologists and their camera equipment. While Heligoland is defiantly all at sea, Geologists reckon that a thousand years ago it was actually a sandstone punctuation to marshland that stretched all the way across to what is now the German coast. Parts of the shoreline are protected by concrete against the stormy ravages of the North Sea. The island is divided into the Unterland, the Lowland and the Oberland which is where I am now along with this attractive palm. Because, would you believe, yes, Heligoland is in the Gulf Stream. So even though it's not as warm as Zanzibar, which we swapped it for, it is a lot better than you might imagine climatically. All through the winter, they say. The German name Helgoland may mean Holy Land, but in 1947 the British devastated the place and laid waste to all the fortifications on the island in an unholy Big Bang. The largest non-nuclear explosion in human history. The Royal Navy bombed it back to the Stone Age rather than run the risk that it could once again be a German stronghold. Five years later, Heligoland was handed back to Germany and it's now home to 1,400 people and a holiday hideaway. Most of the permanent residents live in the south of the island where the ships arrive. Tourism is the economic fuel in summer, mostly day trippers, though you can stay overnight in waterfront properties such as the Hochsee Insel Hotel. 
but fishing continues all year round. Apart from the island's natural good looks, part of the appeal to tourists is the duty-free status of Heligoland, much like the Channel Islands south of the UK. Time to explore. You have a choice of walks, but no bicycles. They were banned after one too many collisions between cyclists and pedestrians. The sandstone cliffs are spectacular, sculpted by time and sometimes RAF Bomber Command into intricate shapes infiltrated wherever possible by vegetation, providing a perfect platform for what feels like a serene rural village. Complete with a flock of sheep, some charming cottages and gardens. Though unlike most quiet German hamlets, Heligoland has two massive communication towers. Implausibly, the scientist Heisenberg came up with his uncertainty principle on Heligoland. No, I'm not sure why either. The island is full of surprises such as what may be sculpture or industrial archaeology. The northern end of the island is decorated with sandstone pillars that show the unique geology of Heligoland, both natural and man-made. This is also where you'll find the highest concentration of seabirds, which greatly outnumber human residents on Heligoland. These are a few of the 50,000 gannets who occupy the island from March to October. They're very relaxed with humans. No zoom lens was involved in the making of this shot. By the way, their speciality is vertical diving. Reverse tombstoning, if you like, to catch fish. In winter, they wisely fly south to Africa. Though I've never seen them in Zanzibar. So, did the British get the best of that geographical exchange? Well, possibly. But Heligoland is still worth a day of anyone's time. It's expensive, but it's worthwhile. It's a tiny fragment of history, all isolated in the North Sea and just waiting for you to have some fun in. <laughs>